Hi, this is Dr. Matthew J. Trom, and I'm going to uh, present to you today uh, the first set of lecture slides for the engineering design course. Uh, the way I'm going to do this is just uh, narrate the slides uh, as I run through them, uh, and I'm going to stop about halfway through, uh, so we'll end up with two uh, videos that, that cover this one set of lecture slides, but that break in the middle will give you a chance uh, to take a break, reflect, uh, maybe get up and get a drink, something like that, um, in, in the middle. So uh, anyway, here we go. So I, I couldn't resist. Uh, I wanted to start with this cartoon, which uh, is so ubiquitous in the uh, design world that I can't even find the original attribution anymore. But um, this is a, an example of uh, what at least some people think happens in a corporate design process um, and it's meant to be funny but it's funny because it has an element of uh, reality to it uh, so here we see uh, how the customer explained it so this is the design that the customer wants and then we progress through this series of slides how the project leader understood it so clearly this is a swing that won't work how the analyst designed it now well, this is even worse, uh, how the programmer wrote it, uh, a little 90 degree angle there, um, how the business consultant described it, so we see this uh, pristine, beautiful, perfect, very comfortable chair with uh, a halo around it, um, <clears throat> how the project was documented, usually nothing, uh, what the operations uh, actually installed, so um, the swing rope, but not actually the swing itself, <clears throat> how the customer was billed. So instead of a little swing, it's actually this huge, gigantic roller coaster. Um, how it was supported. Well, you've got half the tree there, but not the top part that's important. Uh, and then ultimately, what the customer really needed. Uh, so instead of a um, swing like this, what was really needed was a tire swing like this. So um, I include this because I, I think it's funny, but it's also uh, perhaps indicative of the many many ways that uh, design processes particularly with large organizations can go uh, awry so really the purpose of this course um, is to teach you guys the uh, correct engineering design process to avoid uh, a lot of the pitfalls in this comic um, <clears throat> so really the place to start is uh, to describe the difference between the characteristics of an engineering science problem and an engineering design problem. And the reason that I start with this uh, is because up until now, um, you've been solving engineering science problems. So these are problems where um, you're given a problem statement, a paragraph. It's compact, well posed, well thought out. Um, the problem has a red readily identifiable closure. Um, that means you can crank through some calculations and you can get to uh, what seems like the, the end of the problem and there's no need to iterate again um, to try to solve the problem again once you've solved it the first time. Um, the problem uses specialized knowledge, so you think of classes like controls, thermodynamics, heat transfer, fluid mechanics, manufacturing, and so forth. That's the specialized knowledge that's required to solve uh, problems in the engineering science domain. Um, and then ultimately the solution is unique in that there's only one correct answer. And once you get to that correct answer, the problem is solved and you don't really have to spend any more time thinking about it. By contrast, uh, engineering design problems uh, come with a problem statement, uh, usually from a customer, that is often incomplete, ambiguous, and even at times self-contradictory. Um, the problem lacks readily identifiable closure, meaning you can continue to improve, to try to make a better design. Uh, you can iterate essentially forever and perhaps not get to uh, the best possible solution. Um, there's also multiple viable solutions to the problem, so you could find yourself going down one path uh, only to realize that there's a better solution down some other path. Um, and those solutions both might solve the problem, but one could potentially do a better job than the other. Um, and then finally, knowledge from many fields uh, has to be integrated to solve these types of, of design problems. 
Uh, design uh, is also a decision-making process and it's a communication process. And the reason for that uh, is because, at least in the modern industrial world, there's a separation between the engineers who do the design and the technicians who do the, the making, the manufacturing. Um, as I mentioned in the previous slide, design is an open-ended process. Uh, there's more than one feasible solution. And so if you just take the customer needs and you communicate the customer needs to the people who are making this product, who are manufacturing this product, uh, because there are multiple possible solutions, it, it's not going to be clear to the people making the product how to make it because there's many possible solutions. Um, and so what's needed um, is a final artifact description. And that turns out to be the most essential activity um, of the design process is to come up with um, an artifact description. And importantly, that description has to be understandable to the people who are making or manufacturing the final product. Uh, so typically in, in engineering, uh, we use technical drawing, engineering drawing, um, as the, the most common form of communication between a uh, product designer and a product maker. And that's why uh, very early in the engineering curriculum, um, you probably took a course in engineering drawing so that you could learn um, how to make uh, those images, those drawings that really communicate uh, everything from um, the shape of the product that you're wanting to make to the dimensions, to the surface finish, to the color, to the material that um, that final product is made out of. So again, design really is um, ultimately a communication process uh, where the designer communicates to the maker um, how to go from uh, a set of customer needs to a final product that, that solves the needs of the customer. <clears throat> okay, um, so I said I was going to stop halfway through and we're at that point, so I'm going to stop uh, this video and we'll pick it up on this slide uh, when you're ready to, to view the next one.